as a creator, I have a philosophical, really hard time telling how do you make footage the way it is, how you make content based on what you have in your surroundings from what your devices, how you're using them to record or create content. How many different types of content can exist? Like I mentioned in another earlier video, I actually mentioned that. And I was not kidding, I was actually getting deep into that. Like I was overthinking it, but it's a really good topic. It's like how many different kinds of content and personalities on YouTube can exist or in general. In the general space, how many different kinds of content and creative personalities can there be? And how can they come to be even if they don't actually can exist? And it's like a, for me, it's way deeper than that. It's like, how do you know if that content or personality can exist? Even if it does, if you didn't find it yet. And that's, it's it's a big ordeal for me. It's something that I've struggled with for days now. And I'm actually like, I'm not stressing over it, but it's like, it's bothered me. It's definitely been that thing. Or just, it uh, really gets to my head. It could be even be in a deep talk episode, but just, it's something that I got to my head. And I really wanted to make a video about it. Because I knew that if anything, if I was going to procrastinate on videos, this is one of the things I would talk about. Is how do I know, and I keep making this a vague point without saying examples of it, but how would I know if content or personalities could exist? The personalities I want to see, at least on YouTube, I want to see people that are more philosophical, more into underrated topics, more into things that uh, other people won't be willing to talk about, but are still appropriate. Um, expressing ideas, then events, then people, <laughs> if that's the solicism way to do it. But um, I don't mean to be cliche or jade by saying that. Was you know, just I want to see more people who do content that breaks the mold and really, like, really. And I, I'm not trying to be cheap on this, but breaks the mold by actually doing things that you don't you, that you would not think how people have seen before. But content you still want to see. That's a good way to put it, honestly. Even though that's cliche, is content that you would want to see, even if other people don't agree with you. And that's how I would extend that. It's, uh, the content I want to see. I want to see, in, in my case, I want to see more soft skills content. I want to see more claymation content based on underrated things like soft skills, <laughs> which is where I come in for now. But uh, I want to see more content that, again, like personalities, break the mold, and they don't just do things as they're expected, even if that's appropriate or allowed in a sense. But I, in general, between content and personalities, I do want to see things exist in a more inspirational sense, so that I'm not just here sitting here making content and wondering what kind of footage can I make with a talking head or an animated talking head or a frame talking head, like you see in those art videos or whatever, and uh, art animation videos, and you don't, uh, not knowing for sure what kind of content can exist is a really troubling thing. It's like with the footage, like I can record this, the, these cameras or whatever in the real world, and I'm, that's me again, that's me overthinking it, but it's like, I can also record with uh, my evaluating skills or, you know, claymation and uh, other things. And if I had to be really blunt about that, I had I, I will say that I am not seeing the whole picture. I'm not seeing enough of what could be with uh, making video. Because for video to be revolutionary, it's, it's one thing. But it's like, and it has been for years, many years. Not even just since YouTube, but like, since video film has been a thing too. But, uh, you know, in my opinion, it's just, I've always struggled with knowing what kind of footage could exist. I don't even need, think this video needs me as a purpose. I don't think this video needs, like, a, a topic. I don't want to focus entirely on footage. I actually want to get into another point, which is um, how I know if the content I'm making is something that I enjoy or if it's just it's a lame excuse to fuel the things from guilt trips and whatnot because I could swear that claymation was a guilt trip I could swear that I was not making claymation because it was making me happy I was just doing it because I knew that if I didn't do it it'd be a waste of potential or that it would be some kind of a uh, a flaw in my thinking to assume otherwise I can go without it for long and it would be worth it would be worth exchanging the success for uh, for what I could really really get into and, and enjoy but it's just something that I don't uh, favor as much because I really want to be brave and not just worry about myself all the time. But at the same time, my mental health still counts. And that's what D'Angelo Law is against it too. So, 
you know, if you know D'Angelo at least. I knew him when he was at 50,000 subscribers. Jesus. <laughs> Time flies. Or, and the subscriber count, though. <laughs> but, yeah, just, uh... If I were to talk for another five minutes, I want to just say that, uh... I am glad I did claymations. I am glad. It's just something that I didn't, uh... Think I'd have trouble with because I, I learned it really fast. I learned how to make claymations. I learned how to make it work better. Even with my limitations, I still made things really look authentic and as if I was a pro already, even though I only took it for like one to two years at the process. My big gam gamut with it isn't so much how hard it is to make claymations because for me, I've been very talented. It's the tragic story behind it. It's the idea that I did claymations because I felt bad about PMO or felt bad about my life in general about like how things could have been, which I don't dwell on, I hope I don't. But I do want to get, make a point how I did use claymations as a tool and a front to make sure that other things in my life would work. And I should have really already enjoyed it by then. I hopefully I did by then. Hopefully I really did enjoy claymations, but even with with that, it's like I should have only given it not taken it for too much for granted and really thought about what claymations meant to me and not just do it just because it was a tool or a front, you know, it just, it really comes down to that sometimes, I, I, I don't mean to be a burden on that, but it's just, because my, my life story in particular is pretty big in my field of things, it's not a, it's not something that I, I brag about too much, but whenever I bring it up, it, it tends to be the first thing I'll, I will bring up in any discussion, and be like, oh, you're going to answer this one little question with a live story, a response. Oh, my gosh. You know, but, uh, oh, yeah, the, you, want, you want me to go back? To, I want to talk to you for six and a half, plus half minutes and more. You want me to mind if I go back to my last point in the very first vlog video, the one I had unlisted for a while or privated for a while until I unlisted it again? No, republicized re it. The one about rambling and no fap and wants. <laughs> uh, I want to reemphasize that again. I don't think... Rambling can count if it's over 15 minutes and not counting as a ramp. That's the point I was trying to make back then was that if it was over 15 minutes, it could start counting as a ramble. But if it was less than 15 minutes, and especially if you count it as a ramble just because you thought you were talking too much, it wouldn't be. So, yeah. And the other points in those that video was basically just stuff like no, how NoFap wasn't the what people thought it would be. It would be like a good for benefits but that's the person you're supposed to be in general that's the former self and it's also when you're trying to you know like struggle for something that's not necessarily hard but tricky in a sense and uh and the wants part was basically like you don't get everything you want but on the flip side of that you don't struggle for everything you want either you don't have to do that in particular so yeah that was a, the very first vlog attempt i made like a few years ago and it looked really shitty, but it was still high value, as was the first two videos in 2011 that I made on Airbnb 10. Yeah, I have another video alongside this one that I can release. That's uh, the uh, listening skills one. I'm going to put more emphasis on soft skills, whether I add claymation to them or not. But I do want to make long form videos like these that I, don't, I do unedited. And hopefully I don't have to like make too many unedited videos that I intentionally leave unedited. But I want to be, see more of myself talking. I want to see more of my emotional self, story-driven self, uh, deep self, what have you. More of more footage of myself. More footage in general to edit Jesus if I do video edit. Because I keep bringing out that footage. <laughs> and I also do want to see just more content of myself. But not just content that's short or long, but content in general that I, that I actually make it, that I, do, that I do typically enjoy, whether that's cliche or not. And I do want to keep making content, but more specifically, I don't know how to see myself as someone that's not a creator. I don't know how to see myself as someone who doesn't make content, unless I really have a reason to give up by then. Not not necessarily give up, but uh, um, be, really be my authentic self and really like think about what it is I'm doing, even though I know I'm not going to give up too soon. And I'm, I'm not going to even consider what giving up even means even then. I just I know that I, I wouldn't have to give up, but it's, it's other things that come with it. The tragic story part the uh knowing what content or personalities could exist like i mentioned before those two points three and uh yeah i'm gonna actually talk a little bit more in 10 minutes let me just get into something else one more thing i want to talk about is how 
uh, should I talk about the deep docs? I could. The deep docs, um, they, they're content based on deep philosophies, like the first abstract one, which had some original soundtrack from my behalf. It had some original piano music for me and had some uh, abstract colors, uh, different visuals from a webcam and inside of a classes box. <laughs> it had uh, some different things in that point. And I, uh, I really meant to uh, go hard on those. I really enjoyed making deep, doc deep documentary videos. They're the first one, at least. It was something that I really enjoyed making. It was had good watch time. People commented really uh, lovely comments on about it, and even <laughs> even right on sent a real long part that I responded with a long comment, and that was nice. Yeah, but yeah, I just. It, and I and that's why I intend to make more deep docs. The second episode teaser was meant to be more of a uh, initiation to just get going, to just get to the point of noticing that I want to make more deep docs, and if I was really going to make that reality, it doesn't have to be the same type title, indirect constant, direct approach. But there are other titles I haven't equipped for that. But yeah, a whole season of deep docs would be nice. A whole season of three to twelve episodes or more, and Jesus, what have you? If I had claymations with them, that'd be even better. But. Without, even without that, it's, they're going to be pretty good if I commit to them. So, to see in the future, you could expect more deep doc episodes. You could expect more... God, I wasn't throw about the burst. <laughs> no, not like that, but... You could expect more vlogs, more soft skills content, more science communication content, and more me faking my emotions because I don't have them properly until my nofap streak is high enough for me to really configure my lifestyle to the best of my ability. <laughs> And me saying that is honest and authentic, but me faking my emotions isn't. So that's me again um, with my new haircut. And without my glasses, I didn't put on this video because I didn't want to have it in frame. And I didn't want to force myself to wear them either. Yeah. Oh, I could use the glasses as a switching topic, I guess. Because the last thing I will talk about, unedited, vertical, non-short, <laughs> is, uh, and shakling this, shakling ding ding this, uh, phone, is, uh, about claymation itself. Um, claymation's really good medium. It's as underrated as almost it's almost as underrated as soft skills at that point. It's almost as underrated as again this video's gonna be unedited, so don't mind me. <laughs> it's a uh, claymation is a uh, is really really malleable, literally. But you can also consider like the fact because when I very, the very first time I even encountered clay and Wallace and Gromit and stuff like that, I was really driven to it. Maybe before I even did porn as a indulgence as a vice PMO, that was pretty bad, but that's yeah again before I even became an addict to PMO it was like it was more like a claymation was kind of that thing where you just you knew that that world like like the flash games world that rip they'll be flash this year <laughs> twenty twenty one claymation was something it was something different like I looking at the clay blocks I remember and touching them and and uh, actually interacting with modeling clay and stop motion whenever I could. Even back then, in 2011, before, it was really th authentic stuff. It's just, it's an underrated world for sure, and I hope it remains that way. I mean, I hope it remains to be better. I hope it remains to be a good thing and improve in its influence, if not popularity. Claymation's really something that you don't want to just throw out the window just because it's a, uh, uh, not well known or even weird. But at the same time, it does have its falls. It's just, it's something, maybe not something I want to talk about right now for some reason, but because what I really could talk about right now is soft skills. And with soft skills, I think it's the closest I can get to a passion without knowing for sure what I really do want or could be passion-driven for. But with soft skills, I know that I care about them because they're based on variables that I already know very, very well and dear to myself. I am grateful. I am, uh, so in, that, in the words, I'm, I have gratitude. I have patience. I have some variables of soft skills that are important to me, even if they're underrated or simple. But... They, I love underrated stuff. I love Polar, <laughs> uh, the before editor, and I get to that deeply for some reason philosophically because I keep making these connections that are really interesting, which is why soft skills would be a good thing for you to go for, or science communication. Because with science communication, it's really connected to inventing and uh, monkey management in a way. With soft skills, it's connected to who I really am as a person and the person I want to look forward to being, even if it's not as relevant to who I should be. But soft skills is just a, it's a branch into variables that compare to hard skills and technical skills or even social skills and listening skills and life skills you don't uh, go without your skills <laughs> you don't uh, go too much without 
um, the things that can make you a better person, like welfare, social work wise, etc. You know, psychology, neuroscience. It's a uh, journalism. You don't or storytelling, I guess. You don't go too far without soft skills, in my opinion. And that's where I want to be for now. I want to be someone who can uh, really get into soft skills, if even if it's not worth my time. But it could still be something that I need to explore to figure out who I am. And it's just is nice. Obviously, I'm kind of stretching this video a little bit, a lot more, a little bit, and I can still stretch this video if I want to because I know I'm gonna care about watching this footage anyways, on my own time. But yeah, I just uh, I could I mean if I stop now, it'd be a little too soon, even for me, and that would be bragging, about the, um, rambling thing because I it's already over fifty minutes as of this recording, so. Yeah, but I do want to stretch this a little more because I'm going to listen to the whole thing as a podcast or as some kind of a talking thing. If I, so as much as I drink water and so on. Words mixing up here. I'm not tired. I need to keep talking anyways. I need to really be who I am and express that. Hey, so I'm out of crosswind. Oh, you didn't hear me say that. Okay. So, here's the thing about uh, my indifference between STEM and the art animation world. It's, when I say science communication and when I say claymation, I don't mean things are only creative or logical. That's my biggest, biggest diversion between those two topics is logic and creativity. And that's how black and white I can be sometimes. But here's the thing. If you really think that... Uh, Because sometimes I, I can be also insightful too, so I can, I, I'm actually a very insightful person if you haven't noticed already. I, I'm a very insightful person that sells himself short because he doesn't want to offend people, he wants to be a people pleaser. And that's a big fall on my path. I, I am a stepping mat, what have you. I'm inauthentic sometimes because I fake my emotions. And along those lines, I don't appreciate conscience as much as I should have. And I keep dwelling on the idea of being a science communicator. Or it, therefore, a STEM related person because I keep STEM wannabes, what I call it. But uh, with claymation or art animation, it's like uh, it's the world I've been used to, but I don't appreciate it as much. And STEM is the world I want to be a part of, but I haven't even put my film the wire yet. And it's, it's a very odd thing to know that you don't belong in either world because you have how you lived your life, and sometimes even on purpose or not just on accident. But like, obviously, I'm filling the rest of this content with a Topics I'm forcing myself to talk about, but these things I still care about, though. And I and I can get even more philosophical than that. I can even get like to the point where I'm like, do I have to talk about things in order to be in the moment? Because if for me to wait for like an entire seventeen or more minutes not saying anything, that's how deep I'm gonna get. For me to wait the entire time for you to be in the moment, and I keep talking about duration features. I don't. I hope that's not too. Uh, uh, I dare say thantophobic, but like, I mean, it's a. Uh, it's not so much that I don't know how to live in the moment, but there are things that aren't mitch matching my alignment, so to speak. I'm actually going to make a Deep Doc video about that, Deep Doc episode, called Alignment with Encounters. Alignment, alignment of Encounters, and that's going to be more about how you can match yourself with the things that you care about in pattern or in abstraction. And it's like, that's actually what I think it's going to be about. It's going to be about, it's going to be either be a comedy skit based on those things, or a mixture of a comedy skit and abstract, like the first episode. But also story driven with other elements, maybe even claymation, hopefully, maybe, someday. But yeah, it's just actually I can match into uh, twenty one minutes if I can, another two minutes, and I can be done. But I wanted this to be long enough, so who knows? Until someone stops me and I can cut that part off. <laughs> but no, I just here's the thing. I need to drink more tomorrow again. I don't know if it's gonna hurt me again. <laughs> I don't want to have to, have to hurt me, but yeah. Hashtag elaboration, not rambling. <laughs> this is good content for me, at least. I, I'm definitely gonna look at this up when I have the time to, but I will have the time because I want the, all the time to get back to it because I want all the time to have myself talking to myself because I know that I care about what I think. And I care about what I uh, do with it. I care about sharing it in public, but I also don't want to be afraid of what people think either. So, and that goes with both people in, in my circle and on the internet. So, 
science communication has been a bridge to claymation for some reason because of how I can communicate the things I'm passionate about and not limited to maybe not making them too concrete with facts and evidence, which is another deep part of that as well as insightful. But claymation can also be its own supplement. It can be like the butt on the bread. So it can make it more entertaining. It can make it more um, new and fresh. It doesn't have to just be claymation, but it doesn't have to just be science communication either. It, it could be best of both worlds. You don't know that. Just... But based on how I've struggled in life, do you know if I would just make content just because or because I know that I'm lost and I don't know how to get anywhere indifferent from that? It's just, it gets deeper than that. It gets even more depressing. But who, who am I to know if my life is any worse than someone in Africa who's struggling to survive from starvation? And those are the cliche, other cliche, cliche examples you can make about not having the worst life. But as my friend has, one of my friends, good friends once said, everyone has a life that has based on their own circumstances, have been struggled in understandably awkward and sincere, sincerely uh, bad ways. And that's it's a pretty big thing. I'm going to try to go for 40 minutes if I can, because I'm already at 21. If no one drops me, I'll go to 20, 40 minutes and then stop at midnight. And yeah, so... Unless I keep running out of topics, I'll, I'll, I can... One thing I can try is stare at the camera for four minutes and see if I can give you another discussion to talk about. Here we go. 27, okay.
All right, again, guys, the goal is to get to 40 minutes, so maybe like a little bit past midnight, as I'm realizing, before I have to uh, really wrap this up, but 40, 40 minutes is a good measure for me, because if the next video is going to be 6 minutes, I might as well go for 40, <laughs> or 15, because 15 and 40 are some like fair numbers, or 7 and a half minutes, or dollars, etc. But yeah, that was a, what you just saw there was a 4 minute uh, staring at the camera thing, based on the 36 questions. Ideal. I didn't even say that out loud, but I did go for it. And I also want me to clear my throat a little bit. So, there you go. But it's like, here's the thing. As I started the camera for four minutes, did you notice that I was actually being more authentic? That I was actually trying to be real, even though I was wasting your time and not giving you a good chance to know how to make the most of the content as most well of the time. But uh, that's just one thing of it. That's just, uh, yeah, if you wanted to reveal I was succinct, you should have watched my other content. <laughs> Where it was always 17 seconds or more or less. Jesus. I have a two second claymation too. That I kept on this for a while. Jesus. So I know what it's like to make short content. I know what it's like to make content that's really succinct and straight to the point. And it saves your time and respects your time. But for me to stretch out content once and more again. And hopefully inch more into longer content that I actually want to make. And not just edit all time. Or even make it short in general. By trimming it or whatever. Jump cuts, etc. This is the authentic me. This is the me that wants to make all content and be real, even if I still fake my emotions while I'm not on a high enough streak kind of up. But yeah, for the next 13 minutes, I'm going to try to talk about things that are still more authentic to myself. And I keep using that word, I mean it. Let's talk about something that's laid back and simple and funny, even though it's not who I am, because I always overthink everything. I want to be professional, even though that's just me being a wannabe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, so we could talk about cartooning. When I was a kid, um, it was introduced to me by my father, and it was something that I really appreciated, took for granted sometimes even, because it was a world, he taught He should taught me in the traditional way, not the web art one, you know, we all know about art and animation. <laughs> Everything is animation, no, every, what about the medical terms of terminologies of animation where they use a freaking sketch of a robotic arm that's not animation is it it is animation but you don't think it is because you're used to the college version <laughs> those fixed bubbly faces or anime even jesus uh art, anime and manga but it's just you know i'm gonna get a few dislikes for saying that but i, I mean it it's like it's a. Uh, if you even got this one in the video <laughs> but it's just uh you know I always disagree with animation being what people think it is in other terms as well. I have very controversial ways of discussing certain things. Like I, I want to make a video debunking SJW because there's a few sources that help me figure that out. Like the idea of SJW not existing. I want to debunk a little bit, a little bit, on straw man. Because I don't think it's as efficient. I, I think it exists. I think straw manning exists, but I think it's not as efficient as people think it is. Because sometimes people can jump to the conclusion that a straw man's being done. And it can be really annoying on that behalf, not just if it actually was happening. But it can definitely go both ways. So for straw manning to not be efficient, for SJW to not exist, and for the information age to be. Uh, an awkward way to describe the times because there is information you can get to but you don't always know what it is and that's what that's the same argument that they make it's like what? no but really it's like it, 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 what they describe is that in the information age you don't always know what you want to know about but you do have a lot of resources to look for for free and it's like yeah but I can debunk a little bit on information age to be honest I can try to find a way to talk about that in a controversial opposite opinion way because giving the opposite opinion about something can surely get you a view, <laughs> uh, attraction or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, really. Uh, don't dislike this video yet. Just, just give me a chance to redo myself. Because I, um, I really went for this forty minutes. It's almost thirty. Yeah, it's almost thirty. Um, I want to go for these last ten minutes. Really talking about things I really care for and soft skills and science communication were the things I wanted to get off my chest already. So thank God. But uh, with inventing, it's just been like. How do you get the blueprints or the materials and the COVID? And how do you become that kind of a person who's going to be STEM related, even if they're not as uh, ideal to it compared to creativity or animation? You know, how do you uh, make that shift? 
Soft skills is a good enrich for me at the meantime because I know, I know that with soft skills it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a nice thing to be passionate about. Nice thing to, not just not market market management is another thing. Maybe even accounting, but with soft skills it's gonna be just me and uh, the things I could be passionate about, like storytelling, uh, storyline, um, my channel. <laughs> it's a uh, you have to be. It's good to be well centered. It's good to be well aligned and well centered with what you actually think you care about. And at least give me a chance because I don't even clearly make good enough videos about anything yet. I mean, I still make good videos, but I don't make them good enough. Like the thumbnail quality, the uh, um, other things I could be learning how to do, you know, practicing, experimenting, experience wise. But it's just, uh, you know. Visual aesthetic is something that I always have a hard time with. That visual quality is like, if I would just learn a bit more about thumbnails, not use Photoshop, but with Polar is it enough because I can make color grading. Because I'm an underrated bastard who wants to learn underrated, underrated platforms, underrated uh, elements to underrated uh, tools and gadgets. And speaking of gadgets, freaking uh, inventing is like something that I was because the whole the whole STEM thing was something I was into for. A, many years. I didn't know how to explain that, but I just, I fall into cartooning and claymation in particular because I didn't want to, uh, I was kind of guilt-tripping myself, actually. I, like I said before, I was guilt-tripping myself into wanting to solve my problems using them as a tool in the front, and I didn't want to have to pour them as things I did for fun or for passions. Same thing I did with video games. I didn't, I over-justified them. I didn't want to say that flash gaming was something I did for fun. I wanted to say that there were productive reasons why I indulgent for my mental health even though that can be the exact opposite for some people and some people when some people hear that they're like video games is the last thing you want to do for your mental health but it's it's, it's a controversial thing in my opinion some people will say in particular that if something isn't controversial that's exactly why it is because that's the way i would put it is that if you dismay something for being controversial and you say it isn't controversial it probably is because that's how controversial it is you know works both ways If this was a clip on Twitch, I'd, uh, I'd clip that if I were you. <laughs> Speaking of live streaming, gosh, my, my tragic life story is connected to that too, live streaming. If I were to really make a January 11th or March 15th celebration of the 2011 videos on Twitch or Instagram, for that matter, I would try to do it about not just claymations, I would do it about things like, uh, or Good Evil Zero for that matter, Good Evil. Because those are like, cause the Algebras of Project Teller, etc. things. I talk about the dedicated legacy series, original series. They're not just things I cared about. They're things that were part of my life story. They just have deeper connection to my life story. So they happen to be connected to, as not just being creative uh, series, but things that never existed, but never had to be imprinted differently either. So they were still important to me. But, uh, so we have reached the, tw the midnight mark and there's going to be another, uh, Six minutes until it's actually 40 for this recording. But the last thing I want to say about live streaming was that if I'm procrastinating because I'm afraid of what people think, it's just it's just going to show more and more into the idea of my life story being tragic. Like, it's it's little things that add up to stuff like that. So maybe I'm overestimating my tragedy, but even underestimating actually, or an over, over overestimating. But even so, it's still understandably awkward. It's just like... I don't mean, I say this with the deep talk alignment of, of encounters is just my alignment in life is weird. I don't know what things are confusing me. I don't know what things are making it harder or not. I don't know if I'm making things harder or not because I know I'm improving as a person, but I don't have to lie about that. But you know, but with live streaming, it needs to be more about claimations. It needs to be about the person I am, the authentic self, the ideal self, maybe, not just the actual, if that's not too wishy washy, but you know. The live stream, the live streams, or rather, need to be about who I want to be, as well as who I already am. The real authentic self, with the dreamy self, and that's what I think what people will really appreciate. We are at the five thirty-five minute mark. Uh, I'm, and again, I, I said I was gonna be at forty by twenty-one, so <laughs> minute twenty-one, so you know, there you go. Uh, my voice is already about to give up anyway, so I'm gonna be ready for that. And I really think that people like DeAndre Walls or whoever else makes long as videos. They do not talk straight up like this. They just uh, talk and edit in them. 
and talk and edit it through. Sometimes they do, maybe in live streams, but they don't talk straight up like this all the time. And either that or my, I may need like speech therapy for me to talk longer anyways, because I've been talking a lot before, not just stuff like this, but I, I'm, the reason I stretched this video was to make sure that I have content to look through it for myself when I want to look through it and see more of myself. And that's what this videos like this is for, what these are for. They're just videos where I can look at myself talking about either pointless or reasonable things and knowing that I'm doing it because for, I know that it will count for at least someone person that's going to be me at least from now, you know. For these last four minutes, I'm not going to do the stare thing again. What I'm going to talk about is maybe personality or... That's the cheap one to go for. I already said it in the very beginning of the video that I didn't know what kind of content personalities existed. Um, I would like a certain kind of social circle, actually. actually. There are people like... <laughs> this blows my mind. There are people like uh, Zack the Avenger, D'Angelo Wallace, what have you. Don't don't quote me on this, but it's like... A, not just people around my age uh, uh, group, but like even people that are just... That may share my interests or may have different interests, but would still be attracted to me at some point uh, drawn to me or something not not just woman attraction jesus no fappers I, I, i'm getting to that soon enough in other videos but you know but actually like, dr getting the attention of people that may may want to hang out with me <laughs> without sound like a lonely bastard but you know it's just i'm not lonely right now but i just uh i might be later but who knows if i were to have a social circle with that actually because my biggest gambit with socialization is using them as a tool to figure out if I'm doing things right for myself. So if I don't feel like life makes, makes a difference or means anything, and I socialize, and I'm like, okay, that's what life is supposed to be at my age group, or which is a shallow way to do it, but, you know. But, yeah, really having the socialize with people and not have to over uh, justify it, but also do it because I know that they're going to make meaningful things behind it. And not never knowing what kind of people could be out there, not just the creeps, but even the people that you think are not worth your time. And even if they are worth their time, if they have to be worth their time, you know, stuff like that. And that's, that's me really getting, because with, like, I think Zion, the Orange, and uh, Moriarty had some deep conversations with me where it was like, uh, they didn't mean to make it deep, but it was, it was good enough for me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, stuff like where they knew, like with Zion, he mentioned that, uh, that if everyone doesn't have to have a complex personality. And if I'm wishing for that, it's the definition of fiction. And I think Moriarty also said that it was like a, um, that I'm technically entitled in this content combined. It's, it's a, it's a weird thing. It's like, I don't know how to be grateful for what I have, but I express gratitude a lot otherwise. And it's, it's a weird combination of certain things. It's like, I'm in the missing alignment. I'm in missing a uh, structure. I'm missing a lot of, uh, I'm very confused. I'm missing a lot of, uh, certain elements of living life that should have really kept me alive and surviving. But here I am now. So there's the debunking of that <laughs> that debunked at least but i live a very complicated life where i don't know for sure what's around the corner and i don't even know how to make the most of what i have yet i express gratitude otherwise there's paradoxes like that everywhere there's paradoxes about um how i should have been living how i'm not doing things in a certain way how i could be how i could there are p examples people give me that make me feel uncomfortable and weird and confused even more because I know that they're not relevant to me, but they think that they are because they don't know my experiences and they don't know how to understand my experiences. But I know that I'm not alone in this and I don't have occurrences like that all the time. But and all my experiences, they, some of them could be relatable, some of them could be, and I, I don't doubt that. I know I'm not alone, but it just but it can certainly feel alone if you don't know uh, what you're going through and you just. You can assume that there's no one that is unique as you, or is personality driven, personality driven as you, or is content driven as you. But the the longer I wish for that to be a thing, the more it won't be. So that's why I make content like this in the first place. I would like to thank you for watching for forty minutes. Stay still, because so much is on the move. Claymations are to come, maybe even the Clyde one. See you later, guys. Thank you.